In this video, we're going to focus on creating a slider here with an effect. And if I press play, you can see here we get this nice slider effect with the year being shown at the very end. I can move this here. If we go back here, it will just stop here. There you are. So let's start to create our slider effect in Chart.js 4. First of all, make sure you have your boiler template ready. If you don't know where you can find it, check out this specific link here, which you can find as well in the description box, chartjs3.com, getting started, this link here. Scroll down and copy this chunk of code. And if you want the end result of this, the source code, and from many other videos, check out my Patreon here, where you can get all the source codes of all my videos. So what we're going to do is a bit tricky, so pay attention. First thing what we need to do is we need to create a slider here. So what I'm going to do here just here underneath or just maybe in here somewhere we're going to create a diff and this diff I'll give an ID and we can just say here a year slider wrapper or something like that and then within here we're going to put in our slider first thing what we want to have is the label and the label here we will start with a value of 1800 or 1800 as the year and then what we want to do here is we can copy this. We have another one, which would be the end year. And we can put in here 2022. But between here, we will have a input. And this input here will be the ID name with the year slider. And then we're going to say type will be a range type. Then we're going to say here the min value will be 1800, which makes sense because that is the reason why we have that there. And of course, our max value will be 2022. And then when we have that one here, I guess we can just leave it like that. We can save this, but of course what I want to have more here is maybe a button because we will be needing a button. Button ID, we can say here play. And this button will basically play when we press on that. So if I save this, refresh, there we are. So of course, right now it doesn't work at all. And I think we can maybe increase the width of this, giving it maybe a width of 100% or something like that. Let's make it simple. Let's say style width. And then we can say here 100%, see if that would be working as expected. Like that, I don't like that too much. So what I'm going to do is just here, we can just check what would be the width here. I guess the width is 700 here. So what I'm going to do is I'll just make this 700 pixels and maybe minus a X amount of pixels. All right, 700 is exactly the same. So what I'm going to do here is 650. And uh, I guess we can do that 600. All right, so almost my bad 550 should be fine then there we are so that's for now that's fine because what i want eventually is that when we press the play button this will move and as it animate we'll see here the numbers at the very back so let's start to look how we can do this first of all all these numbers that we have here need to be built into here so what i want to do here i go and say here i guess we can say a constant or well, we can do a let because probably the number will be changing all the time. Starting year will be equal of 1800. Then, and maybe just to make it easier, no need to repeat the let because we can have a comma here. Say end year will be 2022, comma. So another one, so we're going to say the selected year. And the selected year will be whatever the year is, I guess 1800 for now, but eventually that will change when we start to select or move here. And then I'm going to say here, is it playing? So does it has, uh, did we press on the button? So it will start to move. By default, we'll say it's false. And then we have probably everything that we need, but what we want to do as well is we want to make sure that these here, the IDs that we indicated here, will be recognized. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here, um, I guess we can say here, year slider. And maybe what's even better is just this one should have a separate let value. Year slider equal, and then I'm going to grab here the ID. So it's a document dot get element by ID. And the ID that I want to grab here is the year slider ID name, that's this one here. 
So I like that. Make sure it's there between. Next, I want another one, which will need, which will be the play button here, which is this. Maybe we can just say yeah, play button. Copy that. Play button equals, and then we're going to copy all of this, trying to be as consistent as possible by using the same names here. All right. So now we have this here, and I think that this should be just like that. Just makes it easier. Here slider. Now we have this refresh, of course nothing happens yet. So we have the min value, max value, uh, existing value eventually should be whatever the value is, our starting value, but we can work on that. So there are basically two parts on this. We need to create a plugin here that shows the years at the very back here. That's number one. And then we need to connect that with our range slider here nicely so that when we move this, the value would show or the year would reflect at the back, but also when we play this, that the year, as we animate this, will reflect as well at the back. So let's start to work on drawing the plugin first, and afterwards we're going to connect all of this together with that plugin. So what I'm going to do here in the config, I'm going to say a comma, say here plugins, and we're going to give it here a name, and this could be here the year label. We'll be showing the year. So I'm going to copy this, Put it here between slash slash we're going to say here the year label plugin block and then in here we're going to say a constant year label equals and then we're going to say here the id of year label and then we're going to say here because we want to draw this before any of these data sets are being shown so we're going to say here before i guess we can say even before draw so we draw this at the very very beginning then i want to have three different arguments the chart arcs and plugins although i will not be using these two here so we don't even need them but anyway just having them there just for the sake of it all right so now we have this here and then um because i'm doing this arrow function expression i need to put here a column or else we'll get an error so now we have this what i want to do here is to do an object destructuring so i'm going to say and i'm going to put some space here because later on we're going to check if we get an error we need to check later on if there's an error. If that error is there, we'll have to solve that. I expect that error to come, so I'll just make some space here and just start here down first. We're going to do an object destructuring. I'm going to say constant equals chart. And then what we want to do is we want to do an object destructuring. If you don't know object destructuring, I have a video in the description understanding chart yet object destructuring. So make sure you understand this. So I'm going to say a CTX. I want to have the chart area and the chart area will have the let's put in here the top bottom comma left right width height and then what i want to do here is while we have this once we have this all we're going to say save all variables above that's our default structuring so now we have this here what i want to do here is a few things first of all we want to make sure we can put our text here at the back. So what I want to do is I want to draw basically the text. So we're going to say here ctx.font and then we're going to say here the font size. I will I will make later on a calculation for this but for now we're going to say very simple I will make this let's say the font will be bold bold let's make this 12 pixels or even 20 pixels later on it will be huge so don't worry about that and then we're going to say here the font family sans serif. Just all basics. Then what I want to do is I want to give it a color. I'm going to say ctx.fill style. And then let's give this the standard color is RGBA. And then we're going to say 102, 102, 102. And whatever the color here would be is, well, let's make this one. So that will mean this grayish color solid value but maybe i think 0 0.8 would be fine as well we'll see we can always fine tune that no problem so that's the color of our font so then we have that what i want to do now is to show the value so i'm going to say ctx.fill text and then here what we're going to put in here would be the text in this case our text will be 1800 or whatever later on will be looping through these values so we will have to connect that later on. But I'll just put in here now 1800. They have here the X value and the Y value. Well, for this, what we need to do is we need to make sure 
that this is basically exactly in the center here and to do this what we can do here is calculate basically the width here plus the left so what I'm going to say here left plus width divided by 2 or multiplied by 2 whatever you want because the width here is the full width from this point to there I need to be in the center so once we did this for the y value we're going to say top plus and then we do the same except now we're going to say instead of width we do height divide by 2 all right so now what I want to do is just to save refresh and just test this all right you can see here and you might say well it's not really in the center that is correct because we need to have a proper text alignment however our year is showing correctly so what I want to do here proper text alignment let's go up here we're going to say ctx text align and we're going to say here equals center save that refresh now it's in the center what I want to do is just to make sure that the baseline is as well in the center I'm going to say here ctx dot uh, what is that the text base line equals middle we put it exactly in the middle save that refresh in my opinion I think it didn't even move but this is fine so what I want to do now is I want to have a big size of our font however I don't want the font size to be a fixed size so if I do 100 pixels here this is all nice until we start to change our item and that's what I want to avoid and I do feel like this color here is maybe slightly too, too strong so let's do this one at 50% that one well we can do it even a bit weaker let's say at 25 that's a bit more better so we still can see the purple bars nicely all right so how do we fix this uh, font size well what we have to do here is create a new constant and this constant is our font size and what we're going to do with this font size we're going to calculate this font size based on whatever the width is if the width start to change we want to make sure that this is aligned nicely and for that I'm going to do math dot minimum to use a mathematic formula and then I'm going to say here the width multiplied by 0 0.4 and then when we have this we should have a certain value let's do a comma 400 you should get here now a certain value nicely let's grab this font size save that refresh open up this and you can see here now the size get bigger and and I guess it works nicely even if I move it although we have here a solid item so let's soft code this here the issue is this one here so what I want to do is I'm going to say here 80 percent and now we should have a far more dynamic situation as I extend this you can see it starts to grow but let's reflect that nicely on our font size here that I want to put in here so to do this I'm going to remove this I'm going to I'm going to use backtick or template literals so backtick backtick so now this font size would be here as a variable so I'm going to say dollar sign and you can see the curly brace is showing automatically and then we put in the constant variable so if I save this refresh there we are and then now if I move this look at that all right so that starts to look a bit more better and uh, we are now able to go on the next item so we have now this nicely this here needs to be still calculated and I guess what we can do here for now we just grab here whatever the selected year is because the selected year will eventually change depending on when we play on the uh, when we press the play button so I'm going to put this in here there we are and this here later should change because here we have selected something else anyway this starts to look quite nice so now we're done with this part the only thing what I want to make sure here is we're going to say ctx.restore to undo whatever we did here to make sure that nothing will bleed over to something else all right so now we have this here and this button that looks maybe ugly but that's just pure CSS we can always find fine-tune that but I will cover I won't cover that in this video what I want to do next is starting to work with the calculation or the drawing of the item. 
So for this, I'm going to use some uh, additional items here. So we have here, enter, enter, and then by the way here, um, let's see, I had this here. I What I indicated later on, there might be an error, so we have to see on this one. So here, error, I'm going to put a question mark. And later on, I will test this, just to be sure. So what we're going to do now is, first thing, we want to create here a new function and this function will initialize when you press on this play button it should run this but there are two parts of it when i select this other item whatever i select this value should be shown here immediately so it will not only run on play but also when i move this without pressing play it should show here the year so what i'm going to do here now is create a new function and let's call this our initialization function here what I want to do is I want to grab the year slider and basically what I'm going to do is an add event listener that will listen or react or trigger when I move this. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to say here the um, year slider because that is remember the year slider we grab it here above we have this one here that is the slider or the range slider basically. So in here we're going to say add event listener listener and then i'm going to say here on input basically when we insert something this event will be registered and then it will do something here so what i want to do here is the selected year will be equal to what exactly well let me just show you that makes more sense because this selected year is a reference to what we have here so we want to update this and this is the reason why we use a let value because we are re-updating it. But let me just show you if I do a console log and say the E value or the event. Let's refresh. Open up the console log here. And if I move this, uh, all right, interesting. Of course, right now it doesn't work. Why? I have to trigger this one. Right now this is just a function, but it doesn't trigger yet in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trigger this immediately. It will recognize this. So now if I move, there we are. All right, so now we're triggering this immediately, but it will only be triggered on move. But what I want here is basically here, the target and the target here, what I need eventually is the value. Let's see if I can find that one here. Let's go down here on the triple dots to show more items. And we have to look for the V for victory and the value. You can see here, whatever the value is right now, it assumes the value is 1943. This is what I need. So how do I get there? Well, console.target.value. If I save this now, refresh, and now move, there we are. This works. All right. So what I want to do now is I want just to, want to reassign the new selected year. Whatever we select, that will be the new year that we assign to it. Once we do this, I want to select here now my chart because it's the chart object and I'm going to say a dot update. Save that, refresh. So now if I move this, it starts to recognize what it is. But of course, if I play here, nothing happens yet. So we have still some work to do. All right, so what I want to do next is basically I want to make sure that this play button responds, but not only responds, when I press play, you should see the text here change to pause because it should pause or play one of the others. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to hit the play button. And remember this play button we assigned previously as well. I'm going to say add event listener. A listener. And then what I want to do here, it's on click. When I click on the button, what do I want to do? Well, comma, here it is non-event. I don't register that specific event. But what I want to do is I want to check is the item playing. And what I mean by playing is basically here above. Is it playing? Yes or no? Or what you want to do is you want to move this one tick at a time. And you will see that then gradually moving like this. So to do that, I'm going to say here, first of all, I have to check here if it's playing. Is playing. And remember that value we have assigned previously. And then we're going to say here is playing. Then we can say here is not play equal to not play so basically when i click on it you need to check here are we doing something yes or no is there a, what's the status 
Then what I want to do is, I want to make sure that the play button changes the text. And what I want to do is I say here dot inner text, and this will be equal to what exactly? If it is playing, in that case, I want to show pause, or like pause, let's do the American pause, and else I want to show play. Basically what it does is you just check from, did we play? If we did play, it should change this. All right, so once we did this one, of course, let's save that, uh, refresh, there we are. If I press that, it will undo or do whatever we want. But of course, it's not moving because we need to start to put in the uh, the loop calculation here or the set interval so we will loop every 100 milliseconds. So what I'm going to do here now, say a window dot set interval. And basically, this here is starting to track if it is playing what we're going to do. So we're going to say here, if it is not playing, so basically is playing equals false, then I want to say return, just yes, stop. But else, if it is playing, so it's on play mode and it starts to move, we want to start doing something. So what I'm going to say here is another if statement, but this if statement will check, because here's the thing, if we keep on playing after, once we hit 2022, we want to make sure it will stop playing or else it will keep on going while we don't have any more values in our range. So we want to make sure that this is also a protected mechanism. So I'm going to say if the selected year is bigger or equal to end year, and the end year is also a value that we assigned previously, which is 2022, in that case, what I'm going to do here is set the playing, is playing will be set on equal false. And then what I want to do, of course, because once we hit here, you can see here this play and pause. I want to make sure that this here automatically converts back into stopping. And then you have a button to click. Of course, here it will not respond after that. So, but I'll just leave it like that. You can fine tune it by saying end or restart or whatever you want to do. You can find, figure that one out in this structure. I will keep it simple here. But what I want to do then here, at least say this playing button here. I guess we could just even grab this one here. Copy this, put it in here. Is playing will pause or false. But of course, it would jump immediately because this is playing is false. It will always put a pause. So this is like a protective mechanism. All right, and then what I want to do here, of course, then return nothing because we're done. Or basically we hit the end of the tape or well, I guess tape is not the right term, but the end of the road. So if I click on this, I press and play, you can see here, it jumps back immediately. If I go here, it's all right. The moment I hear, there we are. You can see it stops immediately. It stops the playing of it. So now we have this here. Then what I want to do, because this is a set interval, we want to loop through these values. I'm going to say yes, selected year plus plus. All I want to do is I want to keep on moving with the selected year. And then what I'm going to say here is the selected or the year slider, because what I want to do, remember, if I refresh, you can see the slider always goes somewhere in the center. I want to make sure it starts here by default if you refresh. So it's the very first value by default unless we are somewhere playing with it. So what I want to do here then is I'm going to get a year slider dot value because we didn't assign that one. Right now there was no value assigned except this something here in the default. And then we're going to say here will be equal to selected year, whatever the selected year is. And remember we had the selected here of the year at, at the beginning always by default on 1800. So we have this here, and then what I want to do, of course, because in here, I want to update, of course, the chart. So I'm going to get the chart up, uh, uh, chart object, and then we say here dot update, and then finally in here, let's do a semicolon. And then what we have to do here, we have to make sure, uh, oh, and I realize that I'm still in this if statement, this is not allowed, my bad. 
got to cut this out because this if statement would stop. Because this is basically checking if both of these cases are true. In that case, don't do anything. But if it's not true, and then we have to do something. And then it's this here. Then, of course, I want to loop through this every 100 milliseconds. So we have interval of every 100 milliseconds doing something. All right. So if I save this now, refresh. All right. If I play here, we get something here. But if I refresh, you can still see here something working or not really working exactly. So we have to check here what's going on. Um, most likely, I need to make sure that we have our chart initialized as well. So probably I need to create here a function to initialize this. Uh, we're going to say initialize our chart, which is just only this specific item. Why this and not the entire chart? This here is all connected in the block. So when, once this initialize, it will also trigger it all. Or it will move from to convict and then it will understand everything as it should. So what I want to do here, I'm going to grab this one here, also initialize this, and I should expect now a proper response. All right, interesting. There is no proper response. Uh, my chat update is not a function. All right, let's see here. My chat update is not a function. 168. The update, which is the chart object. Interesting. All right, hold on. All right, so after checking, I realized I am confused myself. So my bad. We don't need this complicated matter, although you can have that if you want to load that on a certain trigger, if you want to load the chart on a certain trigger. So this is not necessary. And apparently my code had a predefined item here. Uh, let's see here, where are we? Uh, we have this one here and we just have here. We just need to define here the starting value already. I thought I that was not necessary, but that's my bad. All right, so you can see here this works. Pause, there we are. And if I move this, look at that. If I click here, there, there, oh, that's so awesome. This is so, so much fun. All right, so we have this. You can see here, if I move it, it will work nicely. Next, I was referring to this error that I thought I might have. Apparently we don't get this one. But this was basically what I had prepared if it would not work. It's basically an if statement where we say if the chart doesn't load yet, we want to return nothing. And that's probably when you do a loading of a chart here, that would be the, uh, the case. But in this case, no need to do this at all. And there we are. Look how nice this is. And let's move this here, move there, there. If I reduce the screen, it will show nicely everything. Beautiful. 